Hello everyone, welcome back to The Pen Habit. My name is Matt Armstrong. I'm glad to have you here for another video review. For today's pen, we're going back to the German brand Pelican. Now, Pelican is one of the most well-known, well-respected, kind of iconic brands in the fountain pen industry. And uh, they, they do this thing that I understand. I know entirely why they do it. I'm not personally not a huge fan of it, but I am just as much of a sucker for it as everyone else. They do a lot of limited re edition releases. So limited edition inks, limited edition pens, reissues of vintage pens, you know, and, and today is, today's pen review video is one of those limited edition pens. It is the Pelican M600 White Tortoise Shell. So, uh, like every Pelican pen in the history of ever, it seems like, it comes in the white cardboard box here, which, when you open it up, I'll show you, brings you to this card, you know, pretty standard Pelican cardboard box. You lift the top off here, and inside you find this faux leather pouch. There's some documentation underneath the bed on which it lies. Lays. I always get that wrong. I am, after all, a product of the American education system. Uh, so you've got this leather pouch here with a brown elastic strap and the little plastic medallion that's meant to look like a wax seal. And then once you open that up, you get to the pen itself. Now, the Pelican M600 is, I think, a very pretty pen. Uh, the this white tortoiseshell material was first introduced in 2004, according to Pelican Perch blog, um, and was discontinued in 2011. You can still find the M400 sitting on shelves here and there. You can occasionally find one of these uh, white tortoiseshells in, M, in the M400 size. Uh, they released the M600 size in white tortoiseshell in 2012. So the next year after they discontinued it in the M400 size. Uh, I don't believe this is still being made anymore. I haven't been able to find anyone that has it as, you know, unsold. I'm sure there are a few people out there who do. But, um, but this is one that I got about a year ago from a seller in Singapore. And let me walk you through the pen a little bit. So really... If you know Pelicans, you know this design, and you know this design real well. Uh, there's nothing too new here except for the material it's made out of. So instead of having a black cap or a dark brown cap, the, the cap on the Pelican is white. It's got a 24 karat gold plated medallion here with the uh, laser etching that brings out this kind of relief Pelican logo with the mama Pelican and her baby. Uh, this is the modern version of the logo. The edge has kind of this chisel look, kind of comes in at an angle, um, almost a keystone type look there, uh, which holds on this metal Pelican Bill clip. Very sturdy clip, but still a little springy. Nice material. I like this a lot. Pelican's clips, I think, are some of the most usable in the industry right now. Um, you've got that nice, you know, long bill, it looks like. Then you've got the double cap band, which is pretty standard for the Pelican Souverain design. So it says Pelican Souverain Germany. Then you've got this white tortoiseshell barrel here. Now, the tortoiseshell material on Pelicans is a pretty, it, it's an old material. It's been around for a long time, but they've had several reissues of it. The most recent and most common reissues have mostly been in the kind of this brown tortoiseshell material, which is a lot darker. You know, it's got silvery gray and, and caramel brown colors and things like that, and then a, a brown cap. And I know this looks black on the video, but if I put it next to an actual black cap, you can see the slight difference in color there. Um, this white tortoiseshell material is actually, I think Joshua on the Pelican Perch blog put it best when he, when he called it honey green. It's got kind of a green undertone. Again, this got this very pearlescent but yellowish green color, kind of like a, a greenish honey, little bits of brown here and there. Really attractive material, I think. Um, really neat material and much, much more see-through you know, semi-translucent than the brown tortoise or really any of the pelican materials. It's, I can see through this very easily. I don't need a dark backlight to do it. So 
Overall, I find this white tortoise material really, really quite attractive. Um, I'm not a huge fan of white pens. Uh, one, they're, I, white and gold is a combination that looks a little, you know, TV show Dallas circa 1980s for me. It's a little, <laughs> it's a little dated looking. Um, there's also a little bit of problem with ink staining, which I'll get to in just a bit. Um, then at the end of the barrel here, you've got another double cap ring, which kind of balances out the, the cap or double ring, um, which balances out the cap ring on the piston filler knob. The cap comes off with three quarters of a turn. And then underneath you've got a white section. It's a short white section. It's actually quite a short white section because I can bear, like if I put my fingers on this, I can't. There's no way for me to put my fingers on this and not be feeling the threads. It's just that short. So I usually end up holding it like this, which is not a great experience for me, to be quite honest. Uh, and then underneath that, you've got another gold band here. And then the really attractive, I think, Pelican nibs. I think Pelican makes some of the most beautiful nib designs in Fountain Pendum right now. Uh, really lovely swooping channels, and uh, you've got the Pelican logo and this bicolor design. It is a 14 karat gold nib, and mine is in a medium. But as is common for almost every Pelican nib ever, the, the nib designations are only a very rough suggested guideline. They're usually quite a bit larger than that. Uh, so we'll, we'll get to that in the writing sample. Now, one of the things I mentioned about a white plastic is that I have a little bit of a problem with staining on the section here. Um, it, it doesn't happen with all inks, but certain inks, you know, when you dip the nib in, you have to get it at least up to the bottom of the section here. And if you get it much deeper than that, the ink on this will kind of stain the section until you can do a thorough cleaning and, you know, stick it in a uh, ultrasonic cleaner, or really get, get in there with some running water. Um, that bugs me a little bit. I, I don't like seeing the remnants of my fill on the section. It makes me feel like the pen is dirty and it's going to get ink on my fingers. It usually doesn't, but occasionally, um, but occasionally, especially with red inks, I find this plastic just does not ever come clean with a dry wipe. You have to go after it with water. The other thing that's kind of interesting to me, and it's, this is a little tactile, it, it, I'm going to try to explain a tactile experience, but the plastic doesn't feel as solid or as robust as the plastic on the M800s or uh, M1000s that I've used, even on the M200 Amethyst. This white plastic feels soft. It's not, but it kind of feels more plasticky than resiny, I guess, if that makes any sense. It feels cheap. Um, Part of that may have to do with the fact that this is an exceptionally light pen. Um, and so the plastic doesn't have the added heft behind it of a, of a metal filling system or things like that. But it, the, the white plastic on this pen feels kind of cheap and plasticky as opposed to being a solid cast resin. I don't know how true that is. It's just that's kind of how it feels in my hand. Um, Aside from that, it's really a nice pen. It's, uh, it's a lovely pen. It writes very, very well. Um, let me go through some comparisons and some measurements. I'll do some writing and talk you through that a little bit, and then we will go ahead and wrap up. So here is the Pelican M600. I don't have a, a Pelican M200 slash M400 anymore. Uh, I used to have one, uh, the the amethyst, but it was just too small for me, so I sold it. Um, so I can't give you a comparison, but just know that it is smaller than this. Here is the M1000 for size comparison's sake, and the M800. So if you put them, if you line them up on the, the body there, you can see, uh, on the bottom there, you can see that the, they graduate in size. Um, I've said this several times before, but I'll repeat it. Of all of the Pelican sizes, the M800 is just, I think, kind of the perfect size. It's not too big. It's not too small. Uh, it's just right. Um, this is a little too small for me. This is a little too big for me. Uh, so that, that's just something to keep in mind. Uh, in terms of other pens, let me compare you here to a Mont Blanc 149 and a Visconti Homo Sapiens Bronze Age. 
And then we have some more affordable pens, such as the Lamy All-Star, the Jinhao 149, and the Twisby, I'll slide these up a little bit, the Twisby Eco. So you can see that in comparison to all these pens, the M600 is still fairly small. Now this is a pen that I have to use posted. Um, lengthwise capped, it is 132 0.9 millimeters, 132.9. Uh, uncapped, it is a one, it's 122.7. It's usable uncapped, it just feels unbalanced to me, uncapped. Um, partially, again, I think because it is very light, and I'll get to the weights in just a second. Um, it, it can be posted, and that is in fact how I write with the pen. I write with it posted like this, which is a 153.6 millimeters in length. So it's not too long to use posted, and this is how I prefer to use the pen. Um, Diameter-wise, you're looking at about 10.2 millimeters in the middle of the section here, 12 millimeters at the widest point of the barrel, and the barrel is perfectly cylindrical, so it's all basically 12 millimeters. And then the cap at its widest point is 14.2 millimeters. And as I mentioned a couple times, this is a very light pen. It is only 12 grams uncapped, which is very, very light, and 19 grams capped or posted. So capped or posted, this pen is actually, oh, don't want to knock everything off the table here. <laughs> capped or posted, this pen is actually lighter than most pens I use are uncapped. Uh, it is a very light pen. The, the piston filling mechanism is plastic um, and also very lightweight. And this is with ink, I should mention. Now, as lightweight as it is, I will say that the piston filling mechanism on this and every Pelican I have ever used in the history of ever is the best piston filling mechanism out there. I have said this before, I'll repeat myself because that's kind of what I do on this channel. Um, every other, literally every other nib or a pen maker out there who makes a piston filling pen could take lessons from Pelican on how it's done. Their pistons are super smooth, no resistance, they just work, and they work every single time. It's not sticky. It, I mean, their pistons, I've never had a Pelican piston that wasn't perfectly, perfectly smooth, and, got, and you could turn it with just a minimum of effort. Kudos to them on doing this. It's, and it's true even on their low-end pens. Their M200, M400, which is only like 120 bucks, um, all the way up to the M1000s. All of their piston filling mechanisms are superb. Okay, so let me go ahead and do a little bit of a writing sample here for you, and then we'll do kind of a review of the writing and talk about the price and the value. So today we are doing a review of the Pelican. M600 White Tortoise. Actually, I think it's technically called the White Tortoise Shell. We have a 14 carat, or in their case, carat gold nib. And I got this nib in medium. It is actually writes more like a broad than it does a medium. And then the ink for today is one of my new favorites, Diamine Aqua Lagoon. Really, really lovely turquoisey ink. Okay. And now your quote. Oops, we, we cannot forget the S 
on the end there. <laughs> there we go. Okay. Um, I have used several Pelican pens, and all of them have been pretty darn good writers, with one exception, and that was my M1000. That had a few nib problems. And I'll, I'll talk about that in the M1000 review, which is coming up very, very shortly. Um, this one is no exception. The nib is smooth. It's nicely wet. It's got a little bit of a bounce, but, you know, it's, it's a 14 karat gold nib, but it's a little on the small side. So it doesn't have a lot of bounce, but you get, I find a lot of good pooling you can see here on the upstrokes versus the downstrokes. You put a little tiny bit of pressure on there and you can get some pooling, which really helps with shading if you're using a highly shaded ink. Um, you know, Pelican's nibs, I've said, are some of the most beautiful designed out there, I think, beautifully designed out there. But they have an unusual shape. They're very long and slender and they don't have maybe as deep a curvature on the profile as they as other nibs do. Normally, you'd think that this gives them a little bit more bounce, but these these shorter nibs, the M600, the M800, there's not a lot of bounce to these nibs. Um, when I did my M800 review a couple of years ago, I was still pretty new to pens, and I thought the M800 nib had some bounce. It, it really doesn't. Neither does this. Um, it's got a tiny bit of, of tine spreading um, with some downward pressure, so you can get that lovely... Um, you know, puddling and pooling and that sort of thing, which is really quite, quite nice. Um, but you're not going to get a ton of line variation. Very smooth, though. Now, what I will say is I find this nib to write like a broad. This is really not a medium in, in comparison to most German-made nibs. And this is very, very common for Pelican nibs. Um, especially on their upper end nibs, there tends to be, A, they, they, they grind their nibs much wider than almost every other manufacturer out there. They're kind of the opposite of the Japanese in that the Japanese manufacturers tend to grind their nibs. You know, their medium is much finer than a, a standard European or American medium. And with Pelican, almost all of their nibs are on the other side of that. They're much wider than the standard. Um, in addition, I find Pelican's nibs to be a little inconsistent in terms of, of nib gauge. So sometimes I'll get a medium that writes like a broad. I've gotten a couple of mediums that write like double broads. Um, sometimes they're a little on the stubbish side. Sometimes they're perfectly round. That's not to say any of that is bad. It's just to be aware that what you get when you order the pen may not be exactly what you were expecting because I find there is a little bit of inconsistency in nib size. For the most part, I haven't found a lot of inconsistency in nib performance, with the one exception being that Pelican M1000, and I'll talk about that in that review. Um, but this one really does quite write quite nicely. Um, I wrote the review of this as I do, as I try to do with most of my pen reviews, the written review, by hand. I had no ink starvation at all. I had no hard starting, no skipping. There's almost no feedback. It's exceptionally, exceptionally smooth. No pressure needed. I got a little bit more feedback on the side to sides than I do on the ups and the downs. But there is a, a very slight, not, it's, it's hard to see here, a very slight stub-like quality to this nib where the cross strokes are just a little bit thinner than the down strokes. It's not significant by any stretch of the imagination. Uh, reverse writing, it writes well, um, but honestly even more stub-like and about the same width. So um, if you're expecting to get a finer finer uh, <laughs> line on the other side, you may be disappointed a little bit there. Um, if you're looking at wetness, so here is one square of wetness. It's a pretty darn wet pen. We'll do three squares of a double pass just to get you a sense of how that writes. So it's, it's I'd say, a moderately wet broad, even though it's technically a medium. It writes like a moderately wet broad. Um, but really quite a pleasant nib and quite a, a pleasant writing experience. The piston filler gives you a lot of ink capacity, so the, the extra wetness um, isn't, isn't a burden on the pen. The feed is well designed and keeps up nicely. Um, aside from the little issues of the plastic sometimes getting a bit 
temporarily stained from the ink and the fact that it's just too small in my hand for me, um, especially right around the grip. The, the section is just too small. I also, and this is, this is getting a little off base here, but um, people have kind of given me a hard time. It's like, well, if you held the pen on the section like a normal person does, first of all, they know such thing as a normal person, especially when it comes to your handwriting grip. I know people who have studied, there's supposed to be technically a right way and a wrong way to do it. Um, I use a fairly standard tripod grip, which is to say I rest the pen on my third finger and grasp it between my, or my, my middle finger and then grasp it between my, my pointer finger and my thumb. But I tend to, so instead of holding it like this, which is how I feel I have to hold it in order to, to fit comfortably on this section, I tend to hold my pen like this. I like my fingers extended. It keeps me from pressing too hard. It kind of forces me to use my whole arm when I write, which is supposed to be the way that you should write to, to improve your handwriting. Um, Gripping it like this, I tend to grip it really tightly and I tend to hold, have to hold the pen at a much higher angle to get the nib to the paper as opposed to being able to hold it like this and kind of just let the pen sit in my hand. So that is, that's why a lot of times I complain about sections being too short. It's because I, I like to extend my fingers a little bit, um, which you can't always do with some of these shorter sections. All right, now finally, let's wrap up and talk a little bit about value. Now, I did a little bit of research online. When this pen was still on the shelves, you know, it was still in production or just recently out of production, uh, I saw a nibs.com posting saying their price for this pen was $475. Uh, I also checked on eBay. I found one seller. It's actually the same seller that I bought this pen from, and he had the pen listed on sale on eBay for $599 US dollars. Now, that is a little on the high side for a, a Pelican pen, but, you know, 475 is about right for an M400 or M600 pen. It's a, still a little on the high side. You can get them from cheaper, but uh, for an out of production, very popular version of the pen, $500, $600 is probably, it's probably right about in the, the proper range there, uh, especially if the pen is in good shape. Now, when you compare that to, let's say, an M600, now this is a brown tortoise. It's another limited slash special edition, so this doesn't count, but a standard M, uh, M800, you could get away with paying between, you know, $500 and $600 for this. I find the M M800 to be a better value than some of these special edition M600s, but if you really love this white tortoise material, you love a white pen, you're not going to find one that writes better, really. I think this pen is just a superb writer, and if it fits your hand, all the better. This is larger than the M200-400, so if you like that kind of in between the 200-400 the and the 800, um, I think the 600 would be a really good option for you. So, uh, that has been my review of the Pelican M600 Pelican Souverain M600 White Tortoise Shell, a 2012 limited edition pen. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them below in the YouTube comments or on penhabit.com. You can also email me, penhabit at gmail.com as well. Thank you so much for watching, and we will see you here next time on The Pen Habit. Bye-bye.